Australia, the land down under, is experiencing a poker boom ignited by a native son and world champion, Joe Hashem. Melbourne's spectacular Crown Casino plays host to the largest poker tournament in Australian history, boasting a prize pool of more than $3 million, with a million going to the winner. Recognized as one of the world's premier tournaments, the event has drawn the biggest names in the game from around the globe to compete with the best from down under and see who will come out on top in the PartyPoker.net Aussie Million. Tournament full of surprise players have seen another top pro fall. Kathy Liebert was on a roll until she ran into tournament ship leader Kenna James. The remaining young guns have returned to stake their claim to the final table. Tonight's main table includes the magician Antonio Espandiari, who returns alongside South African Mark Boss and the American Phenom Shamshore. It's the PartyBooker.net Aussie Millions. Welcome to the Crown Casino. We are in Melbourne, Australia. Barry Tompkins, Michael Koenig alongside. 418 players began competition. We are now down to 12. Here's our feature table at the chip count. Jerry Fitt, a billion, 188,000. Shannon Shore is right there. Jeff Seeley at 619. The short stack is Esfandiari right now. Well, big players have, uh, have taken their hits in this event so far. Now it's Esfandiari who's on the bubble. <laughs> All these players, Barry, are trying to get to the Magic 7, the final table of the Aussie Millions. Five of them won't be invited. Just 12 players out of 418. At the start of the tournament, no? No. Sure, with an ace-queen. Cool. Plays a cute, just smooth calls from the small blind. Voss in the big blind gets to see the flop for free. 6-8 queen on the flop, so both pair, but sure, of course, is paired as queens. Four on the turn. 16,000. 16,000 is the bet. And I think Mark Voss thinks he has the best hand right now. Sure, slow played this before the flop. He slow played it on the flop, and Mark Voss certainly can be forgiven for thinking that his pair of eights is the best hand and that Shore's on some sort of draw. So he calls. Oh. Now the river. And a queen, so trips for sure. And Mark Voss actually probably likes seeing that queen. It makes 65. it even less likely cool. that his opponent, Shore, had a queen in his hand. And that is going to get him in trouble. Shore takes down a healthy pot. Good pot for the American Shore. Pass on. Well, right now, let's take you to our other table. Remember, we're down to two tables now. And Cruz Baca all in against Nadad Medich. Baca with a pair of tens. Medich, a pair of kings. And Medich, a monster flop. Three kings. Baca is going to need running cards. Whoa, look at this. Not so fast, Mr. Medich. <laughs> About to offer the uh, conciliatory handshake. But there is a straight draw now. Still got a chance. Doesn't happen. And so Medich will eliminate Baca. It'll still be a payday for him. Baca will finish in 12th position. 37,658, not bad. He looks like he's from the Middle Ages, doesn't he? With that, with that sweater? I mean, seriously, he looks like a knight going out with the sword and everything. Yeah. Well, Kenneth James just adding a little jab to Medich, but Medich will take it. He just won a good pot and eliminated another player in the process. Back to our main table now. The blinds are five and ten thousand. Every player anties a thousand. Twenty-one thousand in this pot. And West Bujera is gonna take a little shot at it with the ladies. I would say so. Raise. Raises to thirty-five thousand. And it's Fondiari now. Remember, he's short stack, pair of nines. Yeah, and this is the kind of hand where Fondiari could certainly get in trouble. He knows he's gonna have to make a move with that short stack. There it goes. 
That makes it a raise of 135,000. Neat pumpkin man. What? Neat pumpkin man. A little editorial comment from Mark Voss. You'll have to decipher the accent for yes, me. Yes, exactly. With Bujera, this is a very, very easy call for him. There's a small chance I might fold a few re-raise. <laughs> well, let's see if Esfandiari is uh, conning mm. him or not. Bujera in a good position, but... Just being honest. Everything could change here. Really falls to Bajera. Might as well go all in. Oh, he is all in. All in. Cards, gentlemen. So we have a confrontation. Let's gamble, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I love Australia. <laughs> I'll take that gamble any day. <laughs> Let's gamble. <laughs> this Fondiari is facing the dreaded overpair against like underpair situation. Bujera, four to one favorite going into the flop. And here is the flop. Oh, and there's a queen <laughs> right out of the box. As Fondiari will need running cards for a straight. He's got his backpack already. Good luck, guys. That's it. Pleasure. So as Fondiari is gone, Bujera has eliminated him. He finishes in 11th place as a paycheck in excess. $37,000, of course, not exactly what he had in mind. Well, PartyPoker.net Aussie Millions is brought to you by PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. Welcome back to the PartyPoker.net Aussie Millions. We are here in Melbourne, Australia. Let's remind you once again what it took to get this far and what's involved. 418 players began play. They bought in for $10,000. There's $3 million in the prize pool. Seven players make the final table. Right now, we're at 10. I'm Barry Tompkins. You know my partner, Michael Koenig, and we're really getting down to it now. Ten players remaining, fighting it out for seven positions. Yeah, and we like to make top ten lists, Barry. Top ten boxing announcers, top ten poker players, and every player in this tournament is going to be happy to go home and say, hey, I made the top ten in the Aussie Millions. But in these tournaments, most of the money is concentrated near the top. Therefore, the players, while they're happy to have made it this far, they're shooting for two other key numbers. Seven, our final table, and one, where a million dollar first prize awaits. Ten players left, five at each table, three go home, seven play for a million bucks. Play continues, as we said, ten players left in the competition trying to get to the final table. And Jeff says King Queen. Raise. He's going to raise. 40,000. 40,000 40, the raise. That gets Bajera to muck his hand. I don't know about sure, though, with an ace nine. Well, he already has 5,000 in the small blind. One problem, however, Barry, if he does choose to call here. 115 total. Ooh, he raises. And, and I like that move because. Merely calling there would leave Shore in a terrible position after the flop. He'd have to act first. This way, call. he can end the hand here. Oh. No, Sealy calls. Wow. And that's a really tough call with a king-queen. There are not a lot of hands you can figure to beat that can re-raise you. And in fact, Sealy is beat right now going into the flop. Shore has the best hand with the ace high. Sealy trying to... Take advantage of his position. He'll get to act last. And here is the flop. There's a pair of queens for Seeley. Scary flop. Three diamonds. 130. Wow. And that is a bluff. That's not a semi-bluff. There is no draw there for Shannon Shore. Mullen. Wow. Seeley with the response. And <laughs> sure, just feels like he has been had, and he throws it away. Wow.
bold, bold play, I thought, by Seeley. Seeley saying, I didn't come all the way down under from Noblesville, Indiana to, to play soft. That was big time. So Seeley has to reach with both hands <laughs> to take that pot in. <laughs> You know what we can do? We can all just check fold to the final table. <laughs> Let's just do that. Poker players <laughs> heaven were in our dream. We really could. <laughs> we could check fold our way into $100,000 in a final table appearance. <sighs> Doc Bougiero with an ace eight. Forty thousand is the bet from Bougera. Barry, that's that's a standard raise with blinds at five and ten thousand and a thousand chip ante. Normally players like to raise three or four times the big blind. And Voss gets a little discount in the big blind. He's got King Five suited. Calls. Two to the flop. A pair of eights and a three. Boy, what a flop for Bougera. I'd like to see Bougera put in a little weak bet here. He checks. You know, Voss would expect him to bet any flop, and it would be very difficult for Voss to expect that Bougera actually has an eight in his hand. A little pair for Voss on the turn. And that's going to be incentive enough to bet. 35,000, the bet. Bujera's decision here is merely smooth call or raise. The fact that there are two hearts might make him want to raise. raise. He does. Raise. Raises to 100. Quick call. And oh, a wow. quick call from Voss. The quickness of that call has got to give Doc Bujera some tremors. That was awfully fast call. And the nine on the river, so Bougera with trip eights. Going to bet 100,000. Yeah. And Voss makes the instant call. He'll find out that he's in second place. But Mark Voss is basically thinking, look, okay, this guy, if he doesn't have an eight yes. in his hand, my pair of fives is probably good there. Voss mistakenly believed that his opponent, Bougera, was on something like an ace-king. And that 100,000 chip bet on the end, only a third of the pot, was very seductive. Well played by Bougera. Voss paid him off. We're coming back to the PartyPoker.net Aussie Million. We welcome you back to the PartyPoker.net Aussie Millions. We are here in Melbourne, Australia at the Crown Casino. Barry Tompkins, Michael Koenig alongside. Beautiful conditions outside, but what everybody's concerned about, of course, is what's going on inside where 10 players remain in the competition fighting for a seat at the final table. 37. Raised to 37,000 by Shore. From the button, Mark Voss. Wow! He's the short stack. He finds a pair of kings, and he is delighted to move every single one of his chips to the middle of the table. How much is the all in? Yeah. So Seeley wants to get a count here. The boss, of course, is short stacked. 113. After loss. I call. He's going to call with 113. Call. This is such a great well. situation for Mark Voss because not only is he facing two opponents well, your big with your blow. an overcard, they have the same up. overcard. I could go break. So there are only two cards in the deck that can run down Look. Mark Voss. Thank you. So here we go. Three players. We'll keep playing while you have it. No problem. No problem. <laughs> Shore and Seeley still have chips in the deal that will be a now. side pot if they choose to continue betting. Often in these situations, however, the players with chips will continue to check and hope to eliminate the all-in player. Well, two spades on this flop and also possibility of a straight for Shore. 
Seeley has top pair. And the nine on the turn, check, check. Now, if there were not an all-in player, I promise you Seeley and Shore would be firing chips at this pot, but they want to see Mark Voss eliminated. That's not going to happen. No, it's not. His kings hold up. And boy, it goes from short stack to sitting pretty wow. in a big hurry. Right. Triples on one hand. So Voss oh, remains a player. That, I would have been quite worried. Wow. Wow. I'm glad I didn't see those cards. I thought, look, anything low and I'm probably safe. Well, Voss still is short stack, but not nearly what he was. As he triples up, as you said. Jerry Finn, who's been very quiet, is our chip leader. Bajera is right there. He's got a couple of big pots. Back to back, see here as well. But you make a great point, Barry. For Mark Voss to go from 108,000 to 344,000, he becomes a lot more dangerous. If you're going to bully somebody, you don't want somebody that can really take a big bite out of you. And 344,000 will hurt anybody now. Okay. Even the chip leader. Sure, an ace queen suited. And I'm not sure he's going to get. Anybody to contest him? Michael. Well, shows you what I know, huh? Jerry Fit is the chip leader. He has a jillion extra chips to play with. Okay, a few hundred thousand. Yes, that's close to a jillion, though. Look at three hearts, including a queen. Yeah. All in. Sure, going all in. And I like that move, Barry. I, I think that all in move could get a call here. Jerry Fitz thinking, well, the guy's on some sort of heart, and he wants to force me out of the pot. How much is it? Jerry Fitz could think that his queen is the best hand here. Marco. And there you are. He's got a call. He's a decided underdog. And, and Shore on, is so pass. delighted to one see time. that that's what Fit has. Shore is thinking, man, this guy probably, if he's going to call me, he's got a big Let's heart go. or a straight draw. Good luck, Jerry. Now Fit's drawing to Good luck, random Jerry. sevens. You put the seven out there and make it the seven of hearts. <laughs> I'd cut the seven of hearts right now. I'll give you the tip. <laughs> so here is the Jack turn. Is a good card. It is an eight. It is not a heart. Jerry Fit will need a seven. Otherwise, Shore will double through. He does. Get it. And so Shore does double through through our chip leader Fit. <laughs> you can see that look. That, that does look like the look of a winner, does it? That is the look of somebody trying to get a little extra oxygen. Okay, you can breathe again, Shannon. Yeah, really. You're look, still here. Look of a guy who's looking for that little bag on the airplane. <laughs> Got lots more to go. Don't go away. Welcome back to the PartyPoker.net Aussie Millions. We're here at the Crime Casino in Melbourne, Australia. We continue to try to pair our field down to the final seven. We have ten right now. A whole lot of money at stake. Doc Brugera has been very consistent, looking at a King Jack here. Barry, the blinds have gone up. How much is that? Six and 12,000, 2,000 chip ante, 28,000 in the pot to shoot for. A cool. battle of the blinds here, fit in the big blind. And when it is a small blind versus big blind, King Jack and Ace-4 look like pretty huge hands, especially at a shorthanded table. We only have five players here. Wow, look at that. Way, I mean, is that made to order? <laughs> look at Bouchera. That's the way you dial it up, isn't it? <laughs> look at that face. I like the way he was chewing on his bottom lip. <laughs> Almost chewed his beard off. And fit betting right into that full boat. Let's see how long Bouchera can resist calling. Keep studying those cards, Doc. <laughs> and hope they don't change. I really like how Bouger is just looking and thinking. Cool. And he says, I call. Certainly the right play there. 
continue to send off that weak, I'm not sure kind of vibe. That's too bad that that queen came. Yeah. Too bad for Doc Bougere. It actually might save Jerry Fitt some, some chips here. You know, with two jacks on board, Fitt can be forgiven for thinking that Check. his opponent doesn't have one. It's unlikely, and certainly not the full house. But now, a jack, a king, and a queen fit with his bare ace has got to imagine that Bougere has some part of that flop. Exactly. Now the onus on fit. But well, we're going to keep it friendly. I think it is. It is. I think Bougere would have done well to not reply when Jerry Fit talked to him. Normally, Barry, and this is this is not a hard and fast rule, but when guys are willing to chatter back at you, they're usually feeling pretty comfortable. Now, Bougere, of course, had good reason to. A little bonus coverage now. We're going to take you to our other table. Remember, we're down to two tables now where Kenneth James and Lee Nelson are head up. Nelson has flop top pair, checks it, and James behind him checks it back. Now a flush draw for Kenneth James. Recognizing that there are two hearts on board, Nelson bets out, doesn't want to let anybody draw for free. Now James could semi-bluff here or merely call. And he does semi-bluff, he raises. He's hoping to win the pot right here, hoping his opponent will fold, but if he's called, James has a draw. And it appears he is at least going to be called. He is. And on the river, it is a heart. Ooh. And so Kenneth James has drawn a flush. Nelson just going to play right into James. And a straight call. And James is going to take it down. Bold play by a bold player. Runner, runner for a flush for Kenna James. Well, Kenna James is quiet. It generally means he's playing pretty well. And that's what's going on right now. we got a lot more to go. Not the way. The PartyPoker.net Aussie Millions is brought to you by PartyPoker.net, the world's largest poker school. Still 10 players remaining in the competition here, trying to get to that final table of seven. And this has been a very interesting table, I think, Michael. Well, everybody desperately wants to get to the final seven, but they also seem to be aware that just sitting there and paying the blinds is not going to be a ticket to paradise. You've got to get in there and mix it up. Just like this. Exactly. <laughs> Mark Voss. Deuce four. Now he's Cup. on the button, and, and you can raise on the button with any two cards. You just have to avoid running into hands like pairs of tens. Yes, absolutely. See how he calls. And here's the ironic thing, Barry. Voss can flop something juicy, but... If three overcards to a Good 10 luck. flop, he could just steal this pot. Yes, he could. So, well. so the raising before the flop with the little cards could pay. Oh, there's a four. And, and a deuce. Two. Oh, my Unbelievable. goodness. Unbelievable. And this is a terrible flop for Sealy because he figures that his 10s have got to be good here. Three undercards. 60,000 is a raise. by Voss. And he's going to run right into Two a straight. raise from Sealy. I call. That's going to raise it to 200,000, and Voss says, I'll call. And he called very quickly, Barry. Sealy can't like this. I mean, if you're Sealy, you're thinking, gosh, I hope he's on a diamond draw right now. I hope he's got the ace of diamonds and something else. Well, that surely couldn't have helped him. Okay, I'm going to bet some more. Yep. Make this guy go away. you yeah. have? Well, well, that's a good question. There are so many hands 
that Sealy knows he can beat, but there are a lot of hands that he can't. What's Mark Voss raised him there with a pair of jacks? Check. 250. And 250 a bet from Voss following the check from Sealy. That's correct, 250,000. I like the bet a lot. I don't think Sealy knows what Voss has, by his own admission, really. Well, four deuce is probably the last hand he imagines Precisely. Mark Voss has. Yeah. Well, he's wow. going to let it go. That is a great fold there. And, and that illustrates a very important principle, Barry, when you're really not sure where you're at. Where you really can't figure out the situation, don't get more chips involved. Yeah, that's exactly the way Sealy played it. Mark Boss is going to take it, though. Thank you very much. He had a great flop. This guy's won a World Series bracelet. He's been around the track the South Africa. Played great. I'm originally from South Africa, and I've been in Australia for five years. I always feel fairly comfortable at the poker table. I, have, I play a lot. Um, both online and live, and I went to Vegas for a month and a bit, and um, I came back and I, well, I didn't have anywhere to live. My parents live in Brisbane, but I'm not, not moving back in with them. I'm planning to go over to America soon for a couple of tournaments anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I, have a, I have a bag with clothes and a laptop, and I'm just kind of on the road until I make a decision about where I want to be. Well, should Mark Voss finish first at the Aussie Millions, he'll be able to buy a few plane tickets to wherever he wants to go. Anywhere. Anywhere he hangs his hat is home. That can be said for uh, Kenna James as well, who once again is entangled with Lee Nelson. And now Nelson's going to be all in with that pair of kings. And if James decides to call here, Nelson's going to be a three-to-one favorite. Stop shaking. This is a very tough call, Barry, because when a guy moves all in there and you've got ace queen, you can only hope that he has a small pair because most guys aren't going to do that with an ace jack. So your ace queen doesn't figure to beat very much. Uh, Kenneth James did make the call and obviously not too happy that he did. So here we go. He dodged a bullet a little while ago. How do you like that? Well. James can only hope for a 3-4. Didn't happen. Well, now a, now a jack could give him a straight. And here is the river. It is a six. So Nelson has doubled up through Kenna James. And James taking a very big hit. That one hurts. And Kenna James uncharacteristically quiet, I guess right now with pretty good reason, as Lee Nelson takes down that very big pot. Now Nelson really sitting pretty. Ten players left, seven at the final table. We'll be back. Welcome back to the Crown Casino here in Melbourne. That's the Yara River and uh, the flames of the evening. Beautiful night that it is. Continue, and uh, the flames at this table continue, too. It's been a hot table. Chips being passed back and forth across the table. Nobody has become a clear-cut favorite. Doc Bougera with a king nine. Sure is not going to play. Well, I think Voss might play. Mark Voss has come back from the dead. Now, shorthanded, Bougera could be seduced with his king nine, thinking that Mark Voss is just making a move out of the big blind. Raises to 110,000. It'll cost Bougera 75,000, and unhesitatingly, he does that. Easy to do when you have more than a million in chips. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. So here is the flop, and there is a king for Bougera. That's the worst card Bougera could find. That will probably get him even more deeply involved in this hand. 120,000. Nice bet from Voss, about half the pot. 
And this is a defining moment for Doc Bougera. We're about to find out if he really likes his hand. He does. He's going to make the call here, despite being a decided underdog. I mean, Barry, when you make top pair. 175,000. Wow, and that's, that three is a terrible card for Bougera. It makes his hand look even better. 175,000 is the bet from Voss. And remember, there was half a million in there. Yeah. And a call from Doc Bougera. Huge hand. Look at this pot. Voss has just strung Bougera along like a little bass on a jig. Oh, no, no, okay. cruel and unusual. Call the police. And, well, and, and Bougera says all in. Look at Voss. <laughs> Look at Voss. Oh. I think Voss knows that Bougera had a king. And he folds. A great, That's great fold. Voss knew Bougera had a king, Garbage. and he had the discipline to fold the aces when that nasty river card came. And how tough is that? Tough loss to be sure, but he saved himself a whole lot. Might have kept himself around to play another day. Here's where we stand. And Mark Voss, despite that beat, is still second in the chip count. The short stack is Jerry Finn. What a competition here. I'm very impressed with Mark Voss's play there, Barry. Anybody can pick up aces, as Barry Jeff Seeley proves. Yeah, 60 straight. But a lot of people win a small pot with aces or lose a huge pot. Mark Voss managed to dodge a major bullet. Jerry Fit pair of eights. Now. All in. He goes all in into the face I call. of Seeley's aces. Well, you may recall Wild Bill Hickok with his aces and eights. For Good Jerry Fit, this could aces. be the dead man's get a hand. Pair. He gets aces. It's rough. The same suits. The aces, aces that's that's rough. With the jacks. Right. Same suits, too, as well. And the same suits, Voss points out. Good luck, you, sir. I need to get lucky. Wow. Re really? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jerry Fit, all he could do is just sit back and watch and hope. Deuce three, Jack. Not going to do it. Two more spades. And nobody has Two a spade more spades. Hey. So... Fit is now down eight, to nine, the last nine. card. He'll need an eight. Two outers. Here is the river. It's a deuce. Well, well, and well, Jerry well, Fit well, is gone, well, well, finishing well, in 10th place. He'll earn over $37,000, but of course, that's not what he would have liked. So Fit is gone. Nine are left. Seven get to the final table of the Aussie Million. We welcome you back to the PartyPoker.net Aussie Millions. We are here in Melbourne, Australia at the Crown Casino. You know, when we visited the Crown Casino back in January of 06, the future of poker really did come into focus. Some of the best players in the world were given the opportunity to sample the cutting edge of gaming technology. It's called Poker Pro. And it's the first fully automated poker table. Poker Pro is a dealerless electronic poker table that combines the speed and accuracy of online play with the interaction and strategy of live poker. Who better to test out the new system than a myriad of stars who gathered to compete in this year's Aussie Millions? It took a break from the tournament to put the table through its paces. And it didn't take long to see that the Poker Pro not only made the game easier, but actually took it to a whole new level. Feedback? Absolutely unanimous. Poker Pro was a big hit. And the coolest part is when you put your palms over the little screen, the corners of the card bend up. <laughs> cool. <laughs> what will they think of next? Check. Nothing automated about this game right here, though. This is all about people controlling their emotions, dealing with the highs and lows, and 40. figuring out how to get all the chips on the Four. table parked in front of their hands. Both caught a pair. Shores, of course, is 40. better. 
So you're going to bet 40, despite the fact he is a decided underdog. Oh. Well, underdog no more. He 40. catches a king. What is going on in Australia? It's With amazing. Kings on rivers. It's the water. Two pair. Kings and fives. And Seeley will take it down with kings and fives. So not going well for sure right at the moment. Seeley looking every bit the confident player that he's been all along and sure just saying, woe is me. We take you outside now to our other table and bonus coverage, Nanad Medich and Kenna James, both loaded. And Medich says, I'm all in. James has donned the jacket and the hat since last we saw him. The reason you see this particular matchup so often, Barry, this particular coin flip is because when you've got ace-king suited, there are only two hands that have you slaughtered, aces and kings, and every other hand you figure to be close to 50-50. The queens, however, are the favorite. And a call. You know, you can call it a coin flip, but I'll take the side that's got the 53% over and over. The beach is just saying to the dealer, no ace, no king. Oh, let's see. <laughs> no. Well, it wasn't an ace and it wasn't a king, was it? Now, Barry, I got to point out here, this is unbelievable. Badich has four queens. James actually has yes. an out. Yes, he does. The jack of clubs would give him a royal flush. Well, it's not there. <laughs> he does get a club, but not the right one. And Medici has eliminated Kenneth James. My goodness. I mean, isn't that the kind of thing you just dream about? Yes, indeed. And Kenna James, one of our pre-tournament favorites, battled all the way to the brink of the final table. He'll take home a healthy payday, but I know Kenna James, and he's really only interested in one place. Absolutely. No question about it. Great competitor. And Medici and Kenna James, who really carpet each other quite a lot when they're opposite one another at a table, get the congratulatory hug. How about that for Medici? Kenna James, consolation from his wife. And a deep breath. I mean, that's a tough way to lose, but is there an easy way to lose? No. And you know what, Barry? Whenever you're eliminated from a tournament, the first thing you think is, what could I have done differently? Could I have played that last hand differently? Was there a big hand I could have avoided? I don't think there's any good and shitters for Kenna James. We're coming back. There's a foundation to poker that everyone has to master. And PartyPoker.net is a fantastic place to do this. You learn the value of different hands. You learn how to play different kinds of games. If, you know, if you want to call yourself a poker player, you have to have a certain amount of experience at the tables. PartyPoker.net is a great place to do that. So we now are down to eight players, two tables of four. Next player to be eliminated at either table will mean seven, and that will be our final seven players. Call. Sure, we're going to call, call. The Queen Seven suited. Okay, let's see a flop. Sure's kind of been berating himself for the last 15, 20 minutes. And meanwhile, Seeley's chip stack is, looks like urban sprawl. <laughs> <laughs> Building a new subdivision over there. What a flop. Everybody gets 40. a pair. Top, middle, and bottom. Seely bets at it, and look, look at Shore's hand, Barry. He's got the middle pair, but also the flush draw. That's a very powerful holding, and he's just going to call. Cool. And Voss, All right. top pair, going to raise. Make it 100 straight. 60,000 more. And Barry, I don't think that's a big enough raise. Seely will get out of the way, however, so head up, meaning if... 
anybody is just on a pure draw, Voss has actually given that player a fairly good price to draw here. So Shore could easily call that raise, or he might want to re-raise himself. Thinking about it. Call. He's going to call. Cool. And Shore has the button in front of him. And there is an ace on the turn. You get to see what Voss does, and Voss bets. All in. All in? I call. Wow, Voss makes the instant call, supremely confident that his pair of kings is good, even with good the call. ace out there. He's a big favorite, as you see. Shore looking for a heart, a queen, or a seven. Mark Voss driving the bus with one good card luck, to bro. come. Cheers, man. And Whatever shake happens, hands. Well. Acknowledge each other's play. And here we go. Oh, it's a heart! Sorry, Ouch! That played great, man. And Mark Voss will walk in eighth place, one seat from the final table. Shannon Shore has eliminated nice. Mark Voss. He accepts congratulations from the guys he's now going to be playing head up against. And our final table is now decided. Here is where we stand headed to that final table. Jeff Suey, the chip leader. Nanad Medich, who came from the other table right there with him. Shannon Shore is there. Lee Nelson as well. Bougera will start as the short stack. Kenneth James, of course, he got a quick trip home earlier. And so too will Mark Voss. And there's the man who put him out, Shannon Shore. So. Congratulations all around for those who are leaving. We're going to leave you right now, too. Final table decided. For Michael Koenig, I'm Barry Tompkins. See you next time.